Joe, say hi to YouTube. Hello, friends. <laughs> and anybody that's listening. Where are we going, Joe? Going to the groomer barn. To help who? Help turn Ridge Riders out. Yeah. Do the right thing. That's right. So this is my good buddy, Joe. Um, <clears throat> I go riding with him all the time. His father owns the house that we stay at all the time. So we're up here, we're kind of doing a couple things at the house. And we're good friends with the president of Turn Ridge Riders and they're building a new groomer barn. They're uh, getting some insulation dropped off so we're shooting over there to help him real quick. Uh, we will grab him and we will get an interview with him and he'll kind of tell you a little bit about Turn Ridge Riders and you know what they stand for, what they do, where they are and everything like that. Hopefully we'll get a little tour of the groomer barn even though it's not done yet. We'll have to run it by him and see where we go but we're just uh, cruising down one of the seasonal roads here up in Tug Hill, New York. So, tag you guys along and check it out. Joey clearly doesn't have any uh, windshield washer fluid left. Good job, Joe. Know how to drive one of these, Joe? Nope. You want to find out? Yeah. <laughs> this does not feel sturdy. I don't think you fit in there. <laughs> I legitimately don't think your tall self would be able to fit in there. You got to try now. <laughs> Oh, shit! <laughs> I feel like I'm flying a plane. You wouldn't know the first thing to do. Yeah, put it in dry. <laughs> yeah. And hammer down. <laughs> Did we do a Ken and the Horns one? Yeah. So, as they were building the new groomer barn, um, they were doing donations. You know, if you donated X amount of money, you know, you get your own brick within the new groomer barn. So that was um, the Gillespie Group, which is Joey's father's company. So that's theirs. And then, <laughs> I don't know, I forget how we came up with Ken and the Horns. I think you did, didn't you? So there's a Ken and the Horns one, I think. And then I know I have one. I just don't know where it is. I was looking before, but one, it's freezing. And two, I'm not that worried about it. There I am. I told you I had one. So it was a pretty cool little thing to do. And help these guys out as much as we possibly can. There's the Skipper family. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. It's almost like you know what you're doing. A little bit. <laughs> a little better, huh, Joe? Oh, thanks. 
Can you see better? No. What do you mean no? I saw better before. Look out. Joe, come on. It's freezing. <laughs> do you know where you are? Mackey Road. Oh. You know, moron. There's a snowmobile trail. You know. Had to come to our friends around the corner to go check for mice. Apparently, they had a little bit of a mice issue, um, so we decided to take the ranger. This thing is highly impressive. I don't really. Oh, tailgate's open. I don't really think that you could get this thing stuck if you wanted to. We've brought it through a lot of stuff: snow, mud, the whole ordeal. I don't know the specs on it, to be honest with you. Ranger crew. Sweet, ooh, eight, 800 EFI. And it's got heat. You wanna show the people what this thing can do, Joe, or what? Wanna take it off road, maybe? If you can figure out how to drive it. Nice driving, Joe. Thank me for my service. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Joe. So I told you guys I was gonna lock down the president of Turn Ridge Riders, who's a good friend of ours, and I have finally done that. So we're gonna have a little interview with Chris Skipper, and uh, he's gonna tell you a little bit about Turn Ridge Riders, and uh, kind of what they stand for, what they do, what a snowmobile club is. So here is the man, the myth, the legend, the Presidente. All right, Chris, what is, I mean, tell us a little bit about kind of what Turn Ridge Riders is, sure. what is a snowmobile club, what do you guys do, where do you cover, and everything like that? Well, first off, uh, we're just one of 230 some snowmobile clubs here in upstate New York, and. You know, there's snowmobile clubs all over the country and the world, but really in particular here in New York, um, if it wasn't for snowmobile clubs and landowners, we wouldn't have any trails to ride. So, right. um, you know, in New York, like I said, 230 snowmobile clubs, they're providing you trails to ride on, whether it's state land or private land, the majority of which is private, by the way. We were just talking about uh, yeah. kind of what was private and what wasn't, and he said probably half, if not more than half, are actually private land, which is what the trails are on. So yeah. that's actually a little fun fact that I didn't realize um, yeah here in, so, you know Tug Hill and you know maybe a different percentage across the state uh, but in Tug Hill you're looking at, at, at half or more right uh, there are about uh, of trails that are on just landowners who are you know property who are really willing to help out with um, the local economy and support us through allowing uh, us to have snowmobile trails on their property and uh, they get nothing in return other than potential headaches. Right. Honestly, right. <laughs> um, there's there's no tax advantage for them. They yeah. don't get any. So big shout any out, big nothing. shout out to all the landowners that we have trails on. No, oh, yeah, without landowner, two things. Without two things in New York, you wouldn't have snowmobile trails. You wouldn't have uh, landowners, and if you didn't have volunteers, you'd, you'd have no snowmobile right. trails. So that's 
leads me into another question. So everyone that works for, and I don't even want to say works for, because it's all volunteer, correct? Well, it's a lot of work, but yeah. It is, it is a, yeah, it's, a, it's a ton of work, but <laughs> yeah. it's all volunteer. So all the uh, groomer operators, all the, um, man, I don't know. Yeah, it's, that's your question. Well, yeah, so I mean, our groomer operators are awesome. Don't get me wrong, they're amazing. Yeah. Um, but um, really, for, for us and for anybody that I think that works in, a, you know, works in or volunteers for Snowboat Club, the groomer operator is like the rock star type position, right? Right. But it's all of the work ahead of time. So much behind the scenes stuff. It, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like, for, for instance, just this week, all my lunch breaks for four or five days, I painted 250 stakes, orange six-foot stakes, like that one there. Just yeah. like this one here. Yeah, just like that one there. So 250 <laughs> of those, which makes up roughly, I don't know, 15% of the stakes that we have. We put around 1,400 of them out of Wow, year, it's really that many. Just to mark... 30 some miles of trail no kidding seven miles of trail because we got to keep snowmobiles on the trail right keep landowners happy so you keep guys do safe too, right obviously. so you guys do what 30 miles a little bit over under uh, 37 37 yep. okay so how often do you guys run the groomers per se in a good year uh time wise day wise uh is it like a monday through thursday operation daily. is it a thursday daily every day every day every day if and there's they, snow on the ground every day I and mean, the only time we'll, we'll get a break is if either two things there's no snow right. <laughs> and obviously there's no grooming yeah. or if there's so much snow across the whole state that we just don't get a lot of traffic but here we get so much traffic that it's it's a daily operation mm -hmm. awesome so now you guys are building a new groomer barn which you guys saw earlier in the video i showed you guys so you have two newer groomers yep. and then four all together am yeah. i am yeah. i right there yeah. yeah we have uh two newer tractor style groomers um uh, you'll notice ours because they're black. Yes. Uh, and then we have two orange uh, piston bully groomers, mm -hmm. which are, you know, we'll call them mid eighties vintage. Mm -hmm. So for them, that's what, uh, that's what good old Joe sat in yesterday <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to drive. It's like flying an airplane. <laughs> like flying an airplane. Yeah. So for them, I mean, they're pushing 40 years old now. So mm -hmm. really two is one and yeah. one is none. Right. So that's why we have to keep two of them going. And we use those for some of our uh, steeper terrain. Got it. Okay. The tractors just don't do quite, you know, mm -hmm. as good. Mm -hmm. So the groomer barn is coming together. That was that started last year at some point, right? Uh, yeah, it actually started just about about two years ago. Uh, we um, we were very fortunate that we had a very supportive landowner who donated donated four acres of property to us. Thumbs up to that guy. Yeah, Dana Abbey. <laughs> so Dana gave us four acres of property to get us started, mm -hmm. um, and then we were able to utilize some of our own capital and then some bank loans to get us to the point we're at now. It'll probably take us another year or two before it's you know fully to the point mm -hmm. where we are are done right uh, so to say but for right now it's it's operational and we're really excited this will be our first year ever where we're not you know working on the groomer in a ditch on the side of the trail yeah so so that's always a good thing so a big shout out to chris and all the volunteers obviously that participate in grooming the trails and taking care of the groomer barn and the groomers and and so on and so forth but we always have to ask a question you guys cover so much ground and you guys are always grooming you run into a lot of riders out on the trail so like what yeah. what are things that piss a groomer off well a couple things um we'll just let's let, we'll back it out to what are what are things that make a, a snowmobile club volunteer um really upset somebody who's probably dedicated three quarters of their year to making a trail for somebody to come ride on the weekend and there's a few things uh First and, first and foremost, and we'll, we'll just address the groomer situation. When you come across a groomer, please yield to them. So that doesn't mean slow down. It actually means stop and pull over to the pull side over. as far as you possibly can. Um, don't expect them to stop for you because what a lot of people don't realize is with the groomer is pulling potentially thousands of pounds of snow with them. Mm -hmm. So stopping and starting on them is very difficult on the equipment. It's very difficult mm -hmm. know, uh, on the trail. So we try not to stop um, if you come up behind a groomer probably just gonna have to hang out till they get to the next intersection I mean, till they, they wave a, you by yeah if they have a good spot to stop they will but uh the other thing you really do is help is turn your headlights down so low beams are appreciated mm -hmm. um when it comes to snowmobile club volunteers and what makes me want to throw in the towel once in a while but you know i love this but what makes me want to throw in the towel once in a while is when something bad happens yeah i get really upset you know when somebody hits a tree or hits another snowmobile or it's it's demoralizing mm -hmm. you know when somebody's unsafe and they get hurt it really it's upsetting. It's, it's all upsetting. Together, yeah. yeah, it's upsetting because it's it's not necessary, you know, not at all. Um, and then the other the other thing is, um, you know, staying inside of the stakes is is a huge thing. I mean, like we like you know we mentioned earlier, we got awesome landowners who give us 
you know, 30 some miles of trails mm -hmm. and they give us a 20 foot section of wide, you know, span of 30 some miles of trails. Don't go out of it. Don't make it 25. <laughs> right. They've got, they've got crops. Um, you know, for one thing, you know, there is, there is damage to crops depending on what the crop is. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's under the snow. So it's, it's not your uh, right to get outside of that. Number one. And then number two, it's a matter of respect. If somebody said, Hey, it's okay with, you know, it's okay if you come over and, you know, you use my land, but I'm giving you this 20 feet and you're like, well, screw you. I'm going to take 25. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just showing a lack of yeah. respect. So it's, you know, that's, that's, what's really going to end our sport, you know, potentially or a big, a threat, big threat to our yeah. sport more than anything. <clears throat> so be respectful. Make sure to thank everyone that volunteers because they put a lot of time in. I mean, a lot, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see. Uh, and that goes for anywhere. Maybe not just in New York State where we ride up on the hill, but anywhere. Whether you're in Michigan or Maine and New Hampshire and everywhere else, make sure to thank the guys that take care of your trails and make sure you know that they that groom them. So I want to thank Mr. Chris Skipper here for... Uh, well, Joey took the camera now, so wait, who knows what's going to I have happen. one question. What, what, wait, no, here's go my ahead. question. How many hours and how many miles is spent grooming the trail each year, if you know? So, like, our trail system? Yeah. Uh, I think last year, on an average year, we're, for the 37 miles of trail, we're usually right around 3,700, 35 to 3,700 miles groomed. <clears throat> so, usually we can take our groomers one way to about Anchorage, Alaska. They left upstate New York. Nope. See that, folks? Respect can club. <laughs> so let me, let me get one, one more yeah. word in. So Skipper, Skipper has some some last few words, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, a few parting words. First and foremost, the the best thing you can do, the best money you can spend in snowmobiling, uh, contrary to belief, is not putting a wrap on your sled. The best money you can spend <laughs> on snowmobiling is like joining a few snowmobile clubs, and I don't mean like one. I mean, two, three, four. Yeah. Um, that money goes directly to the trails. You know, you think about all the money you spend on boots and skags and slides and, you know, shocks and all that stuff. And then you're like, well, I'm only going to join one club for $25. I mean, $25, you choke down a cheeseburger and a, you know, and a Coke and you're, you're getting pretty close yeah. to that. So really, you know, join, join more than one club. Yeah. You know, respect. Clubs, clubs are not state funded. Well, they are. To an to extent. An extent. So, like, just let me just give you a, a quick example. I think our state funding uh, accounts for roughly 20 to 25 percent okay. of our annual operating budget. The rest of that money comes from our memberships. So, you know, join your home club. Join. Join yeah. where you ride and join a few of them. Yep. You had a great experience. Write a you know write a, write a note to the the snowmobile club that you had a great experience at and join their club. I mean, mm -hmm. that 25 dollars really goes a long way. That's the only thing that's keeping the groomers going um, every day. Because honestly. With our state money, if we stopped grooming when we were out of our state money, we'd be done just about right after New Year's. Mm -hmm. We'd be we'd be through our money. So. New Year's is <laughs> the beginning of the season. Right. Not, not even so partially the, halfway through. The only thing that keeps people going and the groomers going up here in Tug Hill is joining clubs. And a lot of people have supported. They gave us, you know, great donations to the groomer barn. So we're very grateful for that and, you know, continue it. It's, it's making a big difference. Yeah. Join a club. Make sure to thank them. Ride safe. And... Go see Chris Skipper up on Tug Hill. Not Joey. Hey. Just Chris. Just got home. And we have a package. Can't tell you what's in that yet. Not just yet, but I will. Nash approves of the new package. Like I said, I will get into detail what's in that box. There's a lot of cool stuff in that box, so stay tuned on that. But I want a big... Uh, Give a big shout out to Chris Skipper from Turn Ridge Riders for sitting down and kind of doing a little Q&A and telling you guys what he does. Man, that box is heavy, so I'm out of breath. Um, you, know, what the, you know, what they stand for, how snowmobile clubs work, everything like that. So, like I said in the video, make sure to support them, sign up for your local, you know, snowmobile clubs, whatever trails you ride on. Um, and as for that, that'll wrap up this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I will be back this week with some more Stonewheel content. Thanks. Bye.